So I have absolutely nothing planned for the day. Good morning, Gracie. So this should be an interesting day. Um, I was listening to a podcast. Tim Ferriss has one. And he has a guy named Tony Robbins on the podcast. And um, a lot of you guys know who Tony Robbins is. You know, Tim Ferriss had Tony Robbins on for a two-hour interview. Gotcha. And um, the thing I want to share with you that I pulled out of this two-hour interview was really no real, oh, insights, any major life-changing things, but Tony did something every single morning what he calls absolutely activating his body on a cellular level, and it intrigued me. So I'm like, oh man, what do you do? Because you know, I always, I always like to wake up and try to get my mind going as fast as feasible, right? I hate that brain fog. I want to clear it out. I want to get things rocking and rolling. And what Tony does every single morning was he jumps into an ice cold plunge pool, and he, and one of the things he says what it does is it tricks his body into a fight or flight mode and it makes your adrenal gland just pump out the juices like you know you've got to take action immediately and I've seen it on a show you can't lick your elbow which is a really cool show but that was one of the body hacks that they talked about and I you know he Tony says he has a plunge pool in every single one of his houses and he goes on to talk about his houses here and house there that is the one thing that he won't ever go without. Well, I have a plunge pool too. I just call mine a bathtub, okay? And so this morning, <laughs> I know it sounds really crazy, Gracie. This morning I filled up my plunge pool bathtub with ice cold water, hopped and took a shower, jumped out of the shower, and jumped in that freezing cold water. I think Tony's flipping nuts, man. <laughs> You think so too, Gracie? Okay. <laughs> Be careful on your bidding. There's a landscape company has been around for a while, but uh, I'm not going to say their name. But they specialize in tree removal, and they got talked into, I'm air quoting, to doing a landscaping job by a landscape designer that actually bid the work for them. And what they're doing is they're taking all that rock over there and they are removing it from around the houses. Put this down. And removing the rock from around the houses, pulling it out, and putting new rock in and new plants. And they are absolutely losing their tail because it wasn't bid right. The company that's doing the work is a tree company. The person that bid the work was a landscape designer. They've been here all summer long. They kind of shared with me what they were bidding the job for and it can't be done but kudos to them for sticking with it it's uh it's just a it's a sad thing but the truth is these guys are just losing their butt this is august and they've been here since april no may i think since may just continuing to work through this development and continuing to do the project we're here because we do all the retaining walls year after year after year. I just want to caution you guys. Um, you know, don't get involved in something if you're scared, if you're unsure. Sometimes it's okay to lose a job. I tell you what, I've been blessed so many times with projects that I didn't get that I realized if I had got, I would have been stuck just like these guys are stuck. But now, we are here to look at some retaining walls that we've got to replace. I think like nine of them or ten of them, something like that. So let's get bidding off and hauling that away. This is the window well we rebuilt. We rebuilt that window well. And this is one of the walls that we've got to remove and replace. At first inspection, it looks okay. But when you start to look closer at this wall, this wall wasn't built that long ago. This wall was built probably less than 10 years ago. Look at how it's all separated. So what's, what's happening is the soil is pushing down behind this wall. And as it's pushing the wall out, it's starting to separate the wall like this. Okay.
so we've got this crack running down the crack didn't bother me I seen the crack I've been watching this one but what I just noticed was the separation at the bottom this is what we've got to keep an eye on so right here we've got the footing stationary and the rest of this uh, well it's basically a concrete masonry unit wall window well wall has pushed over the face um, you can actually see the outline of the concrete masonry units underneath the stucco. Yeah. So boom, boom. So this was stucco, I don't know, probably five, ten years ago or so. Actually, maybe older. Well, probably twelve. Twelve? Okay. That's probably a lot older. So this one gets replaced, rebuilt with uh, Versalock standard units. All right. I love it. I said, this is the problem, and Harlan looked at this wall. And he looked at the back of the block, and he goes, oh, my. And he looked right here. That actually isn't the problem, though. The problem is, Harlan, if we look underneath this retaining wall, and you got to scooch down a little bit under this wall, can you see where the wall is starting to tip forward? This one right here? Yes. You can actually see. Oh, oh right. Yes. Right yeah. there? Yes. So if we go down here, let's go here. So the wall is strong off the foundation, and as it comes into this area the wall is starting to lean forward we're gonna go right there harlan go where you're at and then look down at like you're sighting the uh, rifle right there. in you can see it. Right here. exactly he pointed it out that's how fast you can learn these retaining walls right down here just it's coming in when you sight down this side as well harlan you can see it starts right after the curve. Right in that curve, it starts to tip forward. I'm with Bert, he's the sprinkler guy out here, and this is, I love this story. Tell, give me the story again, Bert. Well, when I came out here to do my sprinkler work about two years ago, yeah, I found, riding around, I found the front yard was all totally torn up. And I thought, they must be doing some excavating work here. Come to find out it was the turkeys looking for Problems. Turkeys just tore it oh, yeah. to pieces. I'm gonna Enjoy show you what the turkeys did just out. The whole front yard. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go check out what they did right yeah. over here. This is crazy. Mary Lou, you got your flags yet? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Bert was telling me. Sorry, I video. I had to videotape, but uh, he t did he tell you the story about the turkeys? What, what, uh, Bert, tell her this. Years ago I came here. Is 20 of them going to be enough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 20 of them will be enough. Check this out. This is from the flipping turkeys, of all things. It's not from water. You know, even though it's on a hill, you'd think it would be from water, but the sod is like tore to pieces and it's flipped to the sides. So they're, they're pecking for grubs. In fact, you can actually see some of their crap mixed into the sod. I just, I've never seen anything like this. This is just hilarious. Well, the idea is to try and scare the turkeys away using red flags. So hopefully just by sticking these things in the ground, we'll be able to keep the turkeys from Checking this area up again. Here she is. This is the one that started on fire. Finally getting her back together. It's my Peterbilt, my 98 Pete. Not a bad truck. Box isn't the best, but the rest of the truck's in good shape. What they found out was whoever hooked up the starter on this thing before didn't have it hooked up right, and it was grounding through and it was grounding actually from the starter through the um, coolant lines. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's the same. <laughs> I'm with Mark from Midwest Vents. He's the general. We're on a uh, commercial site. What we're going to be doing is we're just looking over the plans here. The plans have a number of flaws on this commercial site. We're going to point out and then we're going to go over the job. The plans are showing we're going to be removing a CMU wall and it's showing that we're going to be butting into an existing one, which doesn't, the, the doesn't, plans make sense. This, doesn't make sense. It's not accurate. So let's just look at the site, which is behind us. Mark has chained it off. That's 
awesome, especially where we're at in Minneapolis. You got to chain off your sights unless you want your equipment painted with uh, logos that aren't your own. So let's go look at what we're going to be doing. What what is behind? Is this a, a generator system that's behind this concrete wall? Chillers, chillers, chillers. Okay. They're putting a new chiller in. Um, and so we're going to be removing all these brick walls because they're overheating, right? Yeah. The chillers are overheating. They can't vent enough. So we're going to pop all of this out, haul it away, and then they're putting in a brand new fencing system which will allow better ventilation. I'm out at our site in Wyzetta where we just got done removing a concrete swimming pool. The boys aren't here. They're busy hauling the excavator out to that Minneapolis site where we were at with Mark. Um, all the grades are done. This site looks great. I mean, I love what they did here. They got everything out. There was a well house there. They dumped that off, pulled that off the house. This customer is going to be doing an addition on the back side of the house. And then all the grading. Look how far they had to grade. They had to catch this grade. This is something that I need to show you guys. They had to catch this grade all the way out to the street. Um, so all this came, all this came down, comes down like this, and it flows away from the house like this, and it goes right there. It's got done interviewing Charles Glossick. God, I can't remember his name. He actually was one of the founders of SEMA, SIMA, Snow and Ice Management. I'm here with Charles Glossick, founder of, how do you pronounce it? SIMA. SIMA. I always say SEMA for some reason. I don't know why. What? Snow and Ice Management, which is really the go-to information for all of your production rates, all of, you know, whether you want to know how many thousand square feet a ton of salt covers or Trump. how many square feet a skid loader covers. This is the gentleman that figured all of that, that out. That is crazy dangerous. That. I'm not even gonna disturb him. One slip, that dude is totally toast. Oh my God, he's got no safety straps on, nothing. He's working up on a roof, he's spraying it. That guy's got balls of flipping steel, man. Holy crap. Crazy man, <laughs> dude. My dad was a crop duster, but I think you're crazier. <laughs> Are you power washing the roof? Yeah. You don't ever wear harnesses or anything. Just if I clean, I do this. I can stand with my feet. You got bear grips on? Yeah. Okay, that's a little better. I almost feel like I should move that skid loader down below you so you don't hit nothing hard if you did go. Oh, I'm done with this side, so. Well, so what's the tallest roof you ever fell off? I've never fell off. <laughs> that's, why you, that's why you don't wear any equipment. <laughs> oh, that is nuts. That guy's nuts. Um, look at the size of these boulders. <laughs> Golly. You think we were building a wall of China? I painted that skid loader. Yes, I did. Looks okay. Up to top. Nice. Look at that. Blaine's in there. Blaine. Blaine. Blah, 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 blah. Blaine. Timmy's working in his. He busted that yesterday. So he doesn't have an actual bucket. He's using the thumb. Clever chap. Just grabs a big wad of dirt. Well, they dropped the excavator off at the site and uh, we're low on hydraulic oil. So we got to put some AW46 in it, getting prepped, it's what, Wednesday. We technically can't start this job till Thursday, so, but we're still going to get the silt fence in place, we'll locate the utilities. Basically the whole point to this job is this concrete wall that's right here surrounds these chillers 
and these chillers can't get any air. They got louvers in the wall that you can see behind me, but those louvers don't allow enough air to pass through. This is a data plant, and so if those chillers don't work, the computers inside don't work, so that the whole wall has to be ripped down so that you can actually get some air to flow around them. It's just ridiculous. I don't know why they didn't do this much sooner. Customer that owes me 500, over 500, almost $600, just in lawn mowing, and I called her, and I said, you know, I got to collect, or I, you know, I can't keep mowing. Is there anything going on that you can't, any reason why you can't pay? And she's like, no, no, no real reason. I have no excuse. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, collect from her right now. Oh, that was the last stop of the day. I was able to collect from her. She actually uh, was very pleased with the service and blah, blah, blah. So it all went well. Now it's back to the office. I have to put uh, proposals together for all those retaining walls we looked at this morning. Then I have to put a proposal together for a grading project. Um, I have to buy materials yet tonight. I got to get silt fence, 200 linear feet of that ready for that job with where the excavator is at. I gotta pick up 10 gallons of AW46 oil. Uh, let's see, what else do I gotta do? Oh, that pool demo that we uh, were at today. I gotta put the final numbers together on that because we hauled out an extra five loads of materials that weren't a part of the original bid on that job. And then um, we had another change on that project where we did not install the black dirt for them because um, they were not done with construction. So I gotta do a deduct on that. So it's just all paperwork now. Uh, what is it, about four o'clock paperwork, getting materials, getting supplies, and going from there. I don't know, it's been another day. I hope this has helped you out. I don't know how, but if it has, awesome. Please let me know. Let me know what I can do to help you guys and gals out there out a little bit more, and I'll, I'll put it together for you. Otherwise, uh, God bless, take care, and um, get back to work.